Love in a Bottle Value the Love of God Brad and Janet had to do a science report on a current event in science going on in their community for their sixth grade science class. Then they saw in the paper that a scientist on the other end of town was almost ready to get a breakthrough on bottling an important thing that everyone needs. So they called up and got permission to come out and be there for the final tests. When Brad and Janet arrived, the laboratory wasn't exactly what they expected. It was on the edge of town, and the bus went a long way into the grounds and dropped them off to pick them up again in an hour or so. Brad, this looks like an old castle more than a laboratory of a scientist, Janet complained. For goodness sake, Janet, get a hold of yourself. It's okay. Lots of scientists use old buildings. It helps them save money. Ring the bell. So Janet pushed the huge black button, but instead of a ding-dong, the sound of a gong rang through the entire building. It was getting dark, so they were eager to be inside. The sound of footsteps came from inside, and then the big wooden door that was more like a church door than a business creaked and moaned and opened. There in the doorway was a very strange man. He was small, about as small as Brad and Janet, and they were children. He was bent over, and his back seemed to pooch out in back like there was something wrong with it. He had stringy hair, and he spoke badly, like he had a speech impediment. Are you Brad and Janet? he said in a strange way that made them both get goosebumps. Yes, Janet said. I am the girl member of the team, she said, realizing how dumb that sounded. Please come in. Dr. Stein will be waiting for you. My name is Gregor. Please feel welcome. The big door slammed shut like it would never open again and they followed Gregor up a long, spiraling staircase to an upper room that looked like it opened to the night sky where a storm was brewing. Another huge door opened, and they came into a laboratory that was full of whirling lights and colorful fluids boiling and percolating all over the place. Suddenly, from behind a workstation, a wild-haired, silly-looking man appeared. He was tall and lanky, his glasses were taped in the middle, and his hair went everywhere. Brad, Janet, I am so glad you are here for this important night. I am Dr. Stein, Frank Stein, but call me Dr. Stein. You met Igor? The crazy man was talking fast with his hands and arms going everywhere as he talked. I thought his name was Gregor, Brad objected. Gregor, Igor, what's the difference? said the doctor. What's important is what I have here. Look in these bottles. In these bottles, I have the final two formulas for bottling the most important need mankind has ever had. Yes, I have perfected the formula to bottle love. Think of it, Brad. You too, Janet. If I can bottle love, nobody will be unloved ever again. They can just drink my formula and wamoo! Instant love. But... That doesn't really make sense because, Janet started to say, but she couldn't interrupt. This is perfect, the doctor yelled, throwing his arms all around him. The formulas are at the perfect moment right now. We have to get an experiment done. Now, formula number one, it's ready. Igor, come here, drink this. And he handed his bent-over servant the vial with some of the fluid that was supposed to be love. Igor drank it, then he began to twitch and make weird noises. Eek, eek, oops, yowza, Igor said, and then he fell to the ground. He didn't exactly stand up, but got up on his hands and knees. Arf, he barked, ruff, ruff, and he began panting and acting exactly like a dog. Oh my, Janet said quietly. You said a mouthful, Janet. Dr. Stein said. That's all wrong. If you have love in a bottle, it shouldn't turn you into a dog. We need more love in the world, not more dogs. And he went to the counter and got a shot. 
Here, Igor. This is the antidote. He gave Igor the shot. Igor rolled over to have his belly scratched, then twitched. Eek! Eek! Oops! Yowza! He said, and then he stood up. Master, can't we use my for somebody else for these experiments? I am getting worn out turning into things. You mean you have tried your love in a bottle on him before? Brad said with outrage. Well, yes, the doctor confessed. Those experiments didn't exactly work out. The first time it changed him into a lemur. Let me see, then. There was the time he was a ferret, an entire band of circus acrobats, and a stick. Don't forget an eggplant, a Girl Scout, John Wayne, the entire cheerleading squad for George Washington Carver Middle School, and Elvis, Igor remembered painfully. Yes, some of the formulas have not gone very well, Dr. Frank Stein said sadly. But this time I think we are close. He was a dog, and after all, everybody loves dogs. You can't get love inside you drinking a medicine, Janet finally said, firmly getting tired of all this foolishness. What do you mean? the mad scientist asked. You can only get the love of God in you from Jesus, she continued. The Bible tells you all about it, Janet said, and she took out her Bible and showed Igor and Dr. Stein where Jesus taught his disciples that all of us have to accept Jesus as our Savior, and that then his love would fill our hearts to overflowing. You mean God just pours love into your heart? And you don't have to drink anything, Dr. Stein asked. That's right, and you don't have to buy anything or even be a good person, because Jesus will come in and make you a good person from the inside out, Brad added, remembering all the good things Janet and he had learned in Sunday school. Well, there goes the plan to get rich selling love in a bottle, the doctor said sadly. But you can be full of his love right now. You too, Igor, if you let us pray with you to accept Jesus, Brad continued. So the doctor and Igor accepted Jesus, and their hearts were full of God's love for the rest of their lives. God used their amazing talents for good things to help poor people and cure diseases. And they never again made a formula that turned people into eggplants, ferrets, or Elvis, and none of their medicines made people go eek, eek, oops, yowza.